Well, glory to God. Anybody glad to be in church on Wednesday night? Amen. Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet, if you will. Let's just give the Lord a hand of praise. He's worthy of it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Say this to me. Say, the Lord, He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Marvel is the Lord in prayer. God, we just thank you for allowing us to come into your house tonight. Lord, I ask that you just minister us in, in, into this service today, God. And I ask that you just bless the Lord, and we ask that you just give us a peace and, and just to fill your presence even when we walk out, Lord. We just thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all remember what we talked about around here Sunday? Amen. It's the time to leap, not to weep. Amen. How many of y'all are going to praise the Lord tonight? Say, I'm going to praise the Lord tonight. No matter what. Amen. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to praise His name. Oh, 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 I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm not going to be ashamed.
Like I lost no pounds. <laughs>
presence in this developing situation tonight. Thank you, Lord, for laying on us in your presence tonight. Sing that chorus to you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Let's sing it to you.
something going on physically, you know, the doctor had to steroid shot, you know, and where you, the yesterday you used to like just lay around for the TV, now all of a sudden you want to, you want to clean it out of the garage or clean the house, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, God, I believe God's about to give you all the supernatural steroids. <laughs> and uh, I just use that term for lack of a better way to explain it. He does it quick. You know what the Bible says in Romans 8? It says that uh, he quickens our moral body by his spirit that both of them. And it says it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will put him on more fun. Now, I don't know about you, that's the greatest display of power I've ever seen in the world of God. So, what turned death into life, amen, defeated death on the grave, is about to put him on more fun. Y'all see that tonight? Amen. If you're anywhere near these, you can just stretch your hand forward and touch them. In the name of Jesus, let's pray right now. Father, I thank you for my brothers and my sisters that stand before you. I, I thank you, Lord, for just laying upon my heart as your servant tonight. I got what they need. And God, we want them to be quick. We want them to be helpful. We want them to be touched by your mind. And I thank you, Lord, and God, you do care. You do care when we're, we're, we're uh, trained. Yes. So, Father, I thank you for the quickening power, that power, that resurrection power. I pray to be able to be them now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray you just be released into Jeremy right now in Jesus' name. Let him receive that touch of your God. Lord, I thank you you're touching Drew right now. And I thank you, Lord, it's just a, he's receiving it by faith right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, thank you that Catherine's been quickened in her spirit by the Most High God right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for her touch of Teresa. I thank you her body must come in line with the Word of God. We thank you for the quickening power of the Lord. The Word of God is greater. Hallelujah. The Word of God is greater. Hallelujah. The Word of God is greater. Hallelujah. We claim the Word of Teresa tonight. God, I thank you for the quickening power of both Mary right now in the name of Jesus. Everything, everything, God, that says that, that, that down, down, down. In the name of Jesus, you turn it around right now. And it's going up, up, up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you. Just pray this everybody together. Say, Lord, we thank you for your quickening power on our brothers and sisters tonight. I thank you, Lord. They will be sharp in their mind, sharp in their spirit, and strong in their body. To receive the word of God tonight. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand for us. Give it to God. Hallelujah. God's word is good. Amen. And his power is rich. And I'm thankful that I'm here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glad y'all are here. It's good to see you. Uh, Jeremy and Bunch, what was your name again? Caleb. Caleb? All right. Good to see y'all again. Uh, the kids and the teenagers. Is this a son or a Good deal. Good to have you and these kids. Welcome here. Amen. I'm glad y'all are doing something this time. Amen. And uh, I said, Kathy, I'm back here. It's always a blessing to have Kathy with us. And all the regulars here are going to join us online. God bless you. Thank you very much. Well, anybody want to give us the Lord tonight? Amen. 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 Let's uh, take this opportunity to uh, give us the Lord to lead you in the name of you to do so. And uh, we thank you for the blessing that you've given us. And thank you for your faithfulness and giving. God really is blessing.
Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. To the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelt. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which say, I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that readeth it. And unto the angel of the church of Tyre, write these things, saith the Son of God. Who hath the eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach, and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and then commit adultery with her in great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he that searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give him unto one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of the Tyre, as many as have not this doctrine, and, have, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon them none of the burden, but that which ye have already hold, already hold fast till I come. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron and the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my Father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Go back over to the first of chapter 2. Father, we thank you, God, again through your word. I thank you that just by reading your word, Jesus, you said that your word it is spirit and it is life. Lord, we need to be mindful of what you're speaking in the word, to be prompted by your spirit. So, Father, I ask you, Lord, for each one of us tonight, that we would hear the voice by my words. Whatever you want to speak to us personally, God, about our lives, whatever you want to speak to us corporately as a church tonight, I pray in Jesus' name that we would hear your voice, Lord, and we thank you for loving us and for speaking to us in this day and this hour. In Jesus' name, and everybody in the say, amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, we're in the middle of this, uh, this first letter to the church of uh, uh, Ephesus. And I want to uh, remind you, that, man, this first verse tells us that Jesus, is he that these things said, he that holds the seven stars in his right hand and walketh in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Jesus is always walking and near the church. When somebody say amen. amen. I want to tell you, you, you may not can see him with your natural eyes, but Jesus Christ himself is in our midst tonight. Yes. I know that because the word says we need two or three are gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst. Amen. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. So we know that he's right here with us. And he knows our works. I want to tell you, no, no work goes unnoticed by Jesus. It says you give a, cold, a cup of cold water in the name of the prophet, you shall, not, you shall receive a prophet's reward. In other words, God notices every little thing that's done, every work of, work of kindness, every work of labor from the house of God, every uh, act of love. God sees it. Everybody say God sees it. And he knows what you're doing to try to, to work for him, to bless his people upon the earth. And it goes on here and, and says in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast has uh, left because thou hast left thy first love. This is where Jesus shifted gears and says, man, you have done some things great. You've had great works of patience. You've been an active church. You studied the, the church of Ephesus. I want to tell you, they were a, 
they were a, uh, you know, God, Jesus commended them. I love this in verse 2, where it says, And thou hast tried them to say they're apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. They were church that spoke the truth. They called sin, sin, and they called righteousness, righteousness. How many of y'all know we're in a world right now that where the, the, everything, everywhere that says church on the door does not necessarily mean that they're abiding by what Jesus calls the church. Because the church will still call things what they are. The Bible tells us in the last days that men will call evil good and good evil. We're seeing that all over the place. Amen. Sin be accepted in, in the church, put in leadership and, and things. I want to tell you, we've got to stand uh, for what is right. Why? Because, because God didn't love us so that uh, so much that he tolerate our failures. He loved us so much that he forgave us our failures and empowered us by his grace to change. Amen. How many of you are glad you didn't have to stay bound to the stuff you used to be bound to? Amen. Anybody in here used to be bound to something? Hallelujah. But you're free now by the power of God. Aren't you glad you found out that the power of grace was not given to you just to, just to cover it up, sweep it under the rug, still air just the bump in your car? Amen. No, the grace of God was given to told me to get rid of it. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank God for the power to overcome. Amen. And so Jesus commanded the church. Hey, you've called it what it is. You, you've not received false uh, apostles. You've not received false doctrine. You, you, uh, you've been busy about ministry, basically what he's saying. Amen. But then he says this in verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Glory. And look, you know what it's basically saying? You guys doing good. So busy in ministry that you forgot about your personal relationship with me. Yep. Do you know more than, than God wants us to be busy doing things in the church? Or be busy trying to do all that or, or, or taking food to this room? You know, those are all things we need to do. Works are important. But I want to tell you what, if we do all that and we leave out the personal one-on-one -on -one contact we have with the Lord Jesus Christ, then we miss the whole purpose. Amen? How many of y'all remember how you felt when you first got saved? Man, you had so much zeal. When you received the Lord and, and, and took, took the Lord in your heart, man, you felt clean, your sins were washed away, you had a whole new life in front of you, and you, you had that that burden lifted, and, and you were just in love with Jesus. That's why you was ready to go tell everybody in the world about Jesus. Fearlessly. Why? Because you had a relationship. You knew it was real. No one could talk you out of it. The Bible says there that his spirit bears with us in our spirit that we're the children of God. We, you can't talk me out of knowing Jesus. I don't care what you say. Scientists have been trying to prove the Bible wrong for years, and every time they do some big expensive spirit that they just prove that it's the Bible is correct. Amen. Hallelujah. The Word of God is true. Amen. And, and because of what He's done in my life, man, you cannot convince me that God is not real. And, I, and you know what? Not just because of what I know or what I've seen happening in the world, that's verified, but because I know in my spirit that part of me is like God. I know that I know His Spirit bears witness to my spirit. I'm a child of God. And I've got to keep that spirit, spirit communication. You see, isn't that exactly what happened to Adam and Eve? Amen. You know what? God showed up the cool of Eve and walking with Adam and Eve. Man, wouldn't that be a cool thing? God showed up here at your house in the evening, day, and said, Man, let's just take a walk out here. Visit with God for a while. And you know, a lot of times, listen to me now. Remember, that was before sin, that was before the fall. I believe a lot of times no words were spoken. It was spirit to spirit communication with God. God is a spirit, and the worst thing is worse than the spirit. Y'all know what I'm saying? Amen. Just being near somebody. You know, me and Donna have been, been married for a long time, and there's times we talk each other's ear off, and there's times we're just there. Driving down the road, and we just put my hand over on her hand. Just say, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Conversations going on without conversations going on. You know what I'm about? And, and so God wants that. God, God, Jesus says, more than anything, I want intimacy with you. I want to have that one-on-one. -on -one. You see, there's a reason why the church is called the bride of Christ. <coughs> Jesus is still courting us. Amen. One day we're going to be with him. Amen. To 
be with him and love on him and exist with him forever and forever. But we already have him in our hearts. Amen? And we don't need to get so busy. See, you get so busy getting ready for the wedding that you forget to talk to one another. And then it just becomes a ceremony. It just becomes religion. And we all know we got to not take for granted our relationship with the Lord. But we need to daily communicate with Him. You know, every day, every day. I'm not perfect at it. I miss some stuff. Every day I need to just tell God, and I try to, that Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for washing by your blood. I didn't deserve it. The Lord, you're so good to me. I appreciate you. I love you, Jesus. I thank you for God in my life. Amen? Amen. You, you women, do you like when, when your husband tells you they love you? Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Amen. Of course, husbands, you may want to but you like it when your wife tells you Amen. that she loves you. Amen. But I want to tell you something. Jesus likes that too. The Father likes that too. Amen. He's always telling us he loves us. We need to tell him we love him. Amen. Glory to God. Be in love with God. We can't afford to lose our first. See, we can get, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what's a challenge for pastors in this day. Because there's so much evil in the world and so much, uh, so much compromise in the church going on. It's easy to get focused on those things beyond, more so than the love of God. Amen. And we can't get so regimented when things are wrong. Believe me, there are plenty of things wrong in the world today. Would somebody say Amen. That we forget the balance of love. Yes, we got to call evil evil and good good. We can't confuse it as the world's trying to do because no one will understand the line and what Jesus can offer them by coming to Him. Amen? I want people to get saved because they want something different. Not so they can just carry the name of God and just keep on living like they're living. Anybody hear me? Hallelujah. So thank God I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All the saints will be all of them. Pass away. Behold, Lord, look. All things will become new. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, that happens. Why? Because this relationship with him has changed my life. Amen. Yeah. He Amen. said, you lost your first love. In other words, he's saying you let the most important experience in your life become commonplace to you. Amen. So busy with the work of God. God to stay close to God. It's about intimacy. You know, man, us, us that have been married a long time, don't, don't we understand how that works? It's so easy to take your wife or your husband for granted. Amen? But I want to tell you that we need to, we need to guard the relationship with Jesus as well. Amen? And let him know that you love him. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at verse 5 of me. Remember Therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first work. Remember, well, that's a, that's a mouthful. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. In other words, he's saying, remember how far I brought you. Amen. Remember how far you've come. And remember, BC, <laughs> remember yourself before Christ. You remember what you used to look like spiritually? Y'all hear me? Yes. Amen. Not pretty. Yeah, I mean, we're a mess. All of us were a mess. Amen? But Jesus, not to say, not to lift us up, but man, Jesus has done a lot for us. Amen? I, mean, I can take you and point out to you the ones who have been coming here for years, and I know your life. I mean, I mean, man, Mike Schaefer is not the same man that walked into that, that old building the first time. Not the same person. Amen. Jesus has changed his life. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. David McCarthy was not the same man who walked in this building the first time. God's changed his life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, God's changing us by his mighty power. And we need to remember when, when we, we get to thinking that we've got it so much together because of all we do for God. We need to remember how far he draws us from right. and what we used to look like. Amen? And I was thinking the other day about some, some decisions I made in the past. I thought, 
And how in the world did my thinking ever get there? You know? It's like, are you kidding me? That's I just I would look at somebody making that decision and think, you idiot! <laughs> you know, what are you doing? Can't you see what's happening? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Thank God that, that uh, my mind has changed on some things. How many of y'all know the Word of God transforms you by the renewing of your mind? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So thank God. And, and God is saying, I said, remember where I brought you from. Yes. And when we remember where we brought you and, and then we, now we remember, and that's in both ways. Remember the, how far we was away from God. But what Jesus is also saying here, Remember how you used to love on me every day? Remember how we used to talk every day? Remember how you'd go to my word and listen to what I had to say every day? Remember how you, you would be at church every time you possibly could? You hear what I'm saying? Remember when? Remember when? How many of y'all think that those things that we do in faithfulness to God, they should increase Amen. as we grow in God and not decrease? Amen. But we get so busy sometimes, even about the things we think we're doing, doing good for other people. Oh, Jesus, I say what I'm about. I, we, we've had, we've had, uh, we've had folks get so confused they start wanting to do, do good things that will take them out of church. Right. Before you know it, this good thing they're doing is draining them of their spiritual life until they're gone. They're not, they think they're still connected, but they're not a part. They're not connected by Christ because, because this good thing took them, <laughs> took them somewhere. Amen? I, mean, I, I got to share this story. I know he won't mind me sharing because he shared it himself. Uh, all, of us, all of us growing up, you know, we, uh, our dad uh, taught us all how to play instruments. And, and my dad had a dance band for years, and that's how I learned to play and learned to play. And, and, we was playing in the dance hall every Saturday night for years and years for the Lord. Got a hold of our life. And, and uh, Lynn was the first one that got smart and, and got where he needed to be. And, and then I followed. And, and then Glenn took a little longer. Of course, Glenn, my other brother, Lynn's twin, was a great steel guitar player. So he was in much demand. And, uh, but he had made a decision. He, he told the band he was playing with at that time. He said, he said okay, I'm putting this in my last time. And they said, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm, I'm on. I'm going to play for the Lord. I mean, God gave me an opportunity, but I'm going to be committed to the Lord. And I'm, I'm tired of praying, playing these joints and, and uh, this thing. I'm done with it. And so, so he, uh, he gave his notice. Well, then they called him the next week. Glenn, we got one more gig we're on here playing. And, uh, 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 you know, and, and Glenn had just testified at church the week before how he's dropping it off. And he said, but it's, it's a zoo benefit. And it, it, they told him how much money he was going to make. He goes, I sit there and he thought, man, you know, this is after he testified at church. Now he, got, he already told him he was quitting, but now he's got this opportunity to play the zoo again. And, he, and he, he convinced himself that he had a good conversation with God. He said, well, Lord, is it for a good cause? Right. Yeah. So he went ahead and played the zoo again, this benefit. And he's up there playing all this horrible music with horrible words and, and with this band. And lo and behold, Channel 10 News shows up. <laughs> and they come playing on the steel guitar player. <laughs> oh, only way to miss all I can describe is. <laughs> Isn't that how the devil will do? Amen. Amen. Remember. Remember what we did. I don't even know how I got on that story. But anyway. Remember what we did. Stay with your commitments to the Lord. Amen. Therefore, remember from whence thou art fallen. And thank God that was the last one he played. He, he, got, he prayed for the Lord for years. Amen. And so many, many songs come to the Lord. And man, bless the still guitar playing. Amen. But uh, it, it, that's how the devil will do you. Amen. God, I can't remember why God was for Anyway, that was for somebody. Amen. But here's verse 5. Remember there, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. We need to remember what our commitments are. We need to remember what our words to the Lord are. Amen? And when God brings conviction to our life and we say, man, I'm not, I'm not where I used to be with God, then we need to repent. Amen? Amen. 
and he said, God, I'm sorry. How many of y'all know what repentance is? It's not just I'm sorry, but it's I'm sorry, and we turn and do differently. We walk in a different direction. Everybody say repent. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what that's what God has called us to do. Remember, therefore, from which thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto you quickly. And will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. Now those are heavy words, y'all. Listen, now listen to me. Listen to me. I know that religion will tell you that that you know once you're saved, well, you're you're good to go. You know, I believe that it requires a relationship with God, and I believe you got free will, and I believe that even if you truly walk with God, and you Make a decision to turn your back on God. Let me tell you, God is never going to leave you, but he don't lock you in here. Right. Amen. 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 You're a member of the family, but that door is always open if you want to leave it. And if we choose to walk away, listen, Jesus, remember, who is Jesus talking to here? This is the letters to the Church. churches. Yes. And he tells them, here it says, remember what's out there are fallen, repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. That's heavy, y'all. How many of y'all know, like Paul said, I die daily. Amen. We've got to stay with a repentant heart before the Lord so he can keep us right. And if God, that's what the great thing is. Are we going to live without failure? No. Because we're flesh and blood. We're going to fall. But when we fall, the Bible says we have an advocate with the Father. That if we'll confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And I need to live the best of my ability to walk in righteousness with Him. Amen. And if I fall, let me tell you what, I ain't got to worry about it because if I fall, the Holy Ghost is going to give me some forgiveness. It ain't like it ain't like I messed up and it's like, well, nobody ever told me it was wrong. No, when you're in communication with God all the time, and you mess up, you will have a shot. Because the Holy Ghost will come. He will bring repentance. He will, he will put upon your heart those things which need to be changed. Amen? Yeah. And we need to be responsive yes. to that. And allow God to do the work. Because He'll never ask you to do anything. He'll never ask you to drop anything. He'll never ask you to start anything. He'll never ask you to change something in your life without giving you the ability and the help to do it. Somebody say amen, amen. Glory to God. So how many of y'all remember how lost you was tonight? How many of y'all remember maybe some things in closeness to God you used to do? That God's telling you, man, I need to get back to that. I need to start spending quality time with the Lord again. Amen. That's what God has called us to. Amen. He said, you did all these good things for me. You worked hard in ministry, but you haven't guarded your relationship with me. You've lost your first love. Amen. We need to guard it. Our relationship with Jesus is the most important thing that we have in this life. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I really wanted to get into verse 6, but I'm not going to go any further tonight because there's, there's a point here of something that we need to, I want to address. But, uh, but I want to just end right here tonight and uh, Marlon Jacob did a song. I asked him to do it Sunday, uh, and I, I made reference to uh, We're studying about this right now in Wednesday. But uh, it it's, goes directly with what we, we've looked at in the Word tonight. And if y'all mind, I'm going to get up to do that song again. Does that be all right? Yeah. Amen. So Marlon Jacob, y'all join me up here and, and uh, share that song with us. And as long as they're coming, why don't we just take a moment just to love on the Lord Jesus a little bit. Can we do that tonight? Yeah. Lord, we just thank you tonight. We give you glory, we give you thanks, we give you praise, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we love you. We love you, Lord, thank you for loving us. We love you because you first loved us, Jesus. And Lord, we were unlovable. We thank you, Lord, that God, you, you died for us even before we repented. Jesus, you had faith in us because you believed we responded to what you did. So Jesus, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for, for looking on me and for giving me a chance. I thank you, Lord, for drawing me by your Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. And I thank you, Lord, that even after I knew your, your glory and your grace, I fell and, 
and, and got away and tried to justify it, but I thank you for that Sunday, God, that I was in that little wood frame church. The preacher priest said, I knew that I had to get things right with you. I need to, to get back in fellowship with you. So I thank you, Lord God, for not giving up on me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a second, third, and fourth chance. And just the Holy Spirit for just being here with me, helping me so I can stand on my own. Lord, I still need you. I still need you walking beside me. I still need you, your love. So, Lord, I pray, God, that, Father, this week, God, you would just help us to be mindful of our love relationship with you. And as we take time to speak to you and allow your word to speak to us, that, Father, God, we would know that, God, there, there will be sweet communion there between us and you. Lord, I thank you that you care about the things in our life. And that, Lord, you want to minister to them. Lord, help us also to minister to, to you, God. Lord, we want to be like David. It says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. So, Lord, we ask you tonight, forgive us, Lord, when we have failed to love you like Lord, as your people, Lord, we repent. We ask you, God, to kindle once again for us. That first time.
Lord and say, you know what, Pastor, man, I need to get saved. I'm not what I need to do with God. I need, I need Jesus to forgive me. I need, I need the Lord to be in my life. Is there anybody that say that tonight? Say, I need the Lord. I need to make the Lord the Lord in my life tonight. Hallelujah. I want to give one more opportunity tonight. I'm going to pray again for somebody online. You need to make a decision for the Lord. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. While we're doing that, I want to, I want to ask if you're here tonight. You know that you're child of God. You know that you need to, you need to really stir up that love communication to the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity just to spend a mere moment or two at the altar or, or at your seat. And uh, if you need to go, feel free to go. But I want to give you an opportunity to you come pray at these altars for just a moment or where you're seated there. And let's just take a moment to just love the Lord for just a minute before we go tonight. How many of y'all believe he deserves it? Thanks. Nice. 